of there being no BlizzCon. Yeah. In terms of some other factors, then uh, mm. you brought up here that New World is August 31st. Yeah. You're maybe thinking that there could be a 9.1.5 around then, which could be reasonable. Uh, I don't know if there would be a 9.1. Like, I imagine that'll be kind of september -y. I feel like the, the, because they have their point, you know, their point ones or point twos or point threes with these names that they can have big announcements and go, yeah. All right, everyone, here's the new big shit. Here's the change. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the new shit that's big. That doesn't even work either. The new thing, the new thing that's big. Fucking language. Uh, but, you know, you go, here's Chains of Domination, everyone. It's Shadowlands subtitle. But 9.1.5 isn't Shadowlands, Chains of Domination, the Undominationing. Mm. Or something like that. Mm. It, it, I don't think it would get any traction because they don't fill them full of content. It's more, true, true. it's more like the the content brings people back in, and then the systems keep those people there. Oh, see, I, I guess I think about it the whole thing of it is harder to get somebody new yeah. than it is to keep someone who's there. Mm -hmm. So even if they can't market the shit out of it, they're probably still going to want to have something. Uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, that does bring me to Endwalker. Oh, which you know we, we'll properly talk about FF as a game yep. later in the stream, mm -hmm. but uh, I think you know in the same way that we talked about Guild Wars Two and ESO yeah. back in the day in Wildstar, we we got to be real about what's going on in the market. So, Endwalker, mm -hmm. twenty third of November, uh, Blizzard will not have patch nine point two ready by then. I think. Uh, I mean, it depends. They, there, there is a way that they could. It just depends. Mm. Are they willing to have a short raid tier? Because if a raid tier can last four to five months, uh, and you know, I, I would actually say the game would be healthier if we could get raid sizes. You know, if raid sizes were at the point where a four to five month major patch mm. it is what would make sense, uh, I think that would be better for the game because there is more to WoW than just raiding in Mythic Plus. Mm. I, I wish. There, sh there should be more than that. Um, and, you know, maybe that would be a way that Endwalker uh, could actually be met with a patch 9.2. Um, but I kind of doubt that if it's going to be, like, say, you know, end of June and then, like, November for a new patch coming out. But with a raid, well, that would be, what, five months? Uh, yeah. Right, that would be, like, five months for the raid tier. And generally, yeah. that's in the shorter end of, hmm. of recent, right? Uh, Is it? Uh, I actually don't... I, I can never remember. I, I guess, like, WoW's development times and dates have been so weird for the last three-ish years. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, during Legion, it would have been very easy to talk about this, because it was all just on a schedule. Yeah. Uh, now, though, very hard to work it out. When did... When did Battle of Desire Lore come out? Because I'm trying to think, the last one that's, like, a reasonable date to compare is Desire Lore to Eternal Palace. True, yeah. So, battle for Desire Lore. Battle of Desire of, Lore, Michael. It's ah, not, it's that not, was it's not January. BFD. January 22nd, 2019. Yeah. And then Eternal Palace was July or August. Because that was like the five, six months kind of thing. But I think that's actually fully reasonable. Yeah. July mm -hmm. 9th. Yeah, so I think that, I think that yeah. six months is kind of reasonable. So, it's... Especially looking at end of November... I think end of November for another patch actually is fine for how long we'll be in Sanctum of Domination. I, I guess I just, hmm. because of the timelines they've been operating on, Yeah. if I believed that they could get that patch out in that rough period of time, then I'd be totally on board with you saying that they probably will have something out for Endwalker. Mm -hmm. I imagine they absolutely internally are like, oh shit, we gotta do. We do. And yeah, they keep on saying that they don't, Oh, they Matt, do. but they do. They do. They, they do. Obvious, because they literally do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. They literally do, and they're literally about to. In four days' time, they will do literally that. Yeah. Yeah. So, ah, oh, man. Yeah. Kind of tricky. Yeah. Kind of tricky if they're going to have anything to to meet yeah. Endwalker, because yeah. I think that then the issue with Endwalker is if Endwalker comes out in the content drought of patch nine point one. Yep. Then we have a situation where for a new potential FF player, they'll mm. likely have a deal as good as the current one, which mm -hmm. is like the 60% off deal for the complete collection with 30 days of game time for only 13.99 UK money. Yeah, that's uh, uh, 23.99 in US dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Available in the Square Enix store right now. <laughs> uh, yep. So it will be WoW at its trough. Mm -hmm. And like right now, it seems like there's a lot of WoW refugees going into FF. Yeah. And yeah. it's not like they've particularly announced or released much. I mean, there was FanFest and stuff. Yeah. I, but yeah. 
it's just like FF existing and Shadowbringers being good was enough competition to seemingly make WoW sting a bit. So mm. what happens whenever WoW has got a lull and then a new FF expansion comes out, then they do a big promo for all the past content, and then it turns out you've got 150 hours of MSQ content that is mostly fantastic. I mean, that's going to be a real, like, it's going to be yeah. a real challenge for Blizzard, yeah. no matter what way you, you put it. Oh, so that's 150 hours of main story quest content, not not including everything else you can do to catch up, but yes. Yes. It's a lot of content. Yeah. It is an extreme amount. It's, there's, uh, there's no way Blizzard can compete on reasonable terms, honestly. It is straight up just, nah. There's nothing lined up. They would need an expansion to compete with Endwalker at this point in time, I think. Or at least a major patch, launch, a major patch launching day and date. Yeah. And the only thing that Blizzard or Activision Blizzard can do to stop bleeding people is for the Battle.net launcher to scream, don't go anywhere else. We've got something for you. And the only two things there are a new Call of Duty and Diablo 2 Resurrected. And it's within the Battle.net ecosystem, but I think you've, uh, you know, I think you've, uh, you've <laughs> with your facial expression there, I think you've said enough. Like, yeah, you're not going to be, oh, mm. oh, Endwalker, nah, I'm going to play Call of Duty Vanguard instead and wait for the next yeah. WoW patch. That's not a yeah. WoW player. Or Diablo 2 even. And I don't really think with Diablo either. I mean, there's more WoW people in Diablo than like WoW people in StarCraft, but still yeah. not going to happen, I think. Yeah, no, I can't, um, I can't imagine it myself. Like. So that's bi that's basically our situation with BlizzCon. You know, Blizzard's dates yep. are a little bit wrecked, and it's that thing in that IGN article. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, the good days for Blizzard are perpetually just around the corner. Yep. When will they come? I and. think both for employees of the company and also for players of the games. Yeah. Because in the same way, like, we're here, the WoW community, but if you're in the Overwatch community, I mean, the amount of time the Overwatch people had to deal with pretty degenerate metas and Blizzard being pretty damn slow doing anything with Overwatch. Uh, and, you know, Overwatch 2 seemingly taking an inordinate amount of time to make. And oh. it's as if they just didn't plan internally around Overwatch doing well somehow. Uh you know what I mean, right? Yeah. It's like across all the Blizzard communities. I mean, could you imagine being a Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls player uh, in modern day? I mean, I know there are plenty of them, but mm. in a world where at the same time, PoE is just slamming content out. Yeah. Now, I've heard actually some mixed things about PoE lately. Not uh, anything I know enough to get into. Yeah. But, you know, fundamentally speaking, it's yeah. like with all of Blizzard's core pillars, it's like they're behind and struggling. Yep. I think, I think if... This is the only thing I can think of for Diablo people. This is going to, this is going to sound insane. From Reaver of Souls, kind of like since the Necromancer and like, you know, generally tailing off content for just, you know, here's some new season stuff. From then to the release of Diablo 4, you will have had you will have had enough time to play so much Path of Exile that you're absolutely sick of it and can't bear the thought of opening it you never want to and, touch an ARPG again and not even that you like you might you might be able to you might be convinced to go try a different ARPG that isn't Path of Exile by that point and I have to say if <laughs> if, if if someone were pitching their game their game to me or like their their general business idea or like uh we've got this game and it's going to be entirely for people who are sick of this other game and yeah. are coming back to our franchise after uh long many 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 years so that's a possibility but it's also it's just blizzard fans and of fans of blizzard franchises are just left going where's our stuff so actually a few people on that they they mm -hmm. have mentioned in chat black temple black yeah, temple can one. can come out now i do not think black temple can compete with Endwalker. Uh, not even close. Uh, but yes, they they will have something in yeah. the form of BT. Yeah, it's a case where phase two again. It's almost like or the is, same. is BT phase three. I think. It's what phase are the? Yeah, it's not phase it's three, phase... and then Hyjal is phase two. I remember there being some. Uh, I don't think Hyjal's technically phase two. It is coming out later, but I don't think it's technically phase two. Oh, okay. I don't know. I can't remember. You know what? I'll just do a remember. quick, uh, quick Google of of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so phase one is Kara Gruel Magtheridon. Hmm. Oh, I forgot about that. Phase two is Serpent Shrine, Tempest Keep. Yeah. Phase three is Hyjal Black Temple. Mm, right. Okay, yeah. Phase three being November makes complete sense. Yes, it does. Because I imagine, I imagine phase one. You know, actually, I don't feel that bad about not having my character or any of that stuff done in TBC because if phase one is just Kara, Gruel, Maggie, like, 
I mean, the real meat of the raiding kicks off with Serpent Shrine and Temp Tempest Keep. Yeah. So I feel like if that's phase two, I'll have a little bit more time. So that's good. But uh, yeah, TBC will have something, I think, to meet Endwalker. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not, uh, not much from Blizzard to it's compete. It's going to be the, like we are saying earlier about 9.1.5, being more keeping people instead of bringing in new ones. Yeah. That's what they'll have to do with TBC Classic. And that's, you know, I think they may have wounded, with all that drama, they may have wounded some of the people who will jump into it on June 1st or June the, 2nd, whatever. But, uh, they need man. to learn public relations. It, it continually blows my mind, like, how bad Blizzard are at PR. 